So then I need to talk a little bit about fissure eruptions. We looked mainly at central volcanoes and here the oldest uh, historical fissure eruption of significance is the Elkjau fires. Elt is Icelandic or Old Norse for fire and Elkjau is the fire canyon. So here we have a fissure that erupted and uh, here you see that in an aerial photograph. It's a segment of a fissure about 40 kilometers long and it erupted in the 930s. The exact date has been disputed for a long time and we are not entirely sure how long the eruption lasted but probably it lasted for several years and it's believed that the Elgiao eruption stopped the settlement period. So settlement in Iceland started around 800, a little later, and uh, the first wave of immigration to Iceland was abruptly halted and is likely because of the Elgiao eruption. People didn't want to come anymore when they heard about the big eruptions there. So, the Elgiao eruption was likely also inspiring the writers of the Edda, the old North poetry book. And um, here we have several descriptions and in the Edda. And uh, they're not directly referring to volcanoes, but if you read it carefully, it sounds terribly like volcanoes. So, the Elgiao lavas reached the coast and the eruption was followed by three harsh winters. There was a climate effect for several years after the eruption and people nowadays believe that this was the inspiration for the Fimbul winter in the Edda. This is the bad winter when things all break down, when the world of the North gods breaks down. And in the Edda it reads, there will be a winter with the greatest frosts and keen winds and the sun will do no good and there will be three of these. So I think there was certainly uh, oral records of the Elgiao eruption and this was inspiring the writers of the Edda. And um, here there's more descriptions which are quite colorful. So here in the Edda it says, the sun will turn black and land will sink into the sea, the brightest stars will vanish from the skies. Fire will rage forth and the flames will lick the heavens itself. Boulders will slam together so big that trolls will tumble and man will tread the path to hell. It sounds like an intense, very long, very unpleasant volcanic eruption. And we were eventually able to date the eruption because in the North uh, German Saxon Chronicles there was also a reference to that and it was very important because back then this was the first Saxon king in the Frankish Empire. Prior to that it was Frankish kings and uh, it was very important in the Saxon Chronicle to say that he was so important and it helps us because it reads there in the years just before the death of King Heinrich and this was 936, many signs occurred. The mountains of the north are said to have erupted in flames in many places. And given that years here implies one to two years, we actually have a date for the eruption itself now. So, there was a younger fissure, and uh, this was also very unpleasant, the Laki fissure, 1783 to 84. It erupted in uh, 1783 to February 84, and it produced a lot of fluorine-rich clouds. This contaminated the soils locally and a lot of livestock in Iceland perished. And it's believed that a quarter of the population of Iceland perished as a consequence of the death of all the livestock. We estimate that 25,000 people um, on Iceland um, perished because of the consequences, not directly from the eruption, but because of the consequences. And there is... Uh, records from northern Europe that these fluorine-rich clouds reached all the way to Scandinavia. And if you look at the church records in southern Sweden, you can actually work out that the death rate was higher in those years. So, and, well, unfortunately, volcanoes in Iceland have not only affected air traffic in 2010, they have affected Europe for many, many decades. 